Good evening. This is Chief Obitika Jujuku of Nigerian TV Online. Here in Umahira, Abia State, Nigeria. Many countries in Nigeria and many countries in all of Africa have always had problems with economic development, economic growth. It appears as if African countries seem to have, or African countries and states, seem to have some difficulty in its economy development and its strategies and plans. I am particularly pleased to have this guest today. My guest is the Senior Special Advisor to His Excellency Governor T.A.R.G. of Abia State on Economic Development and Strategic Plan. Quite an interesting subject and quite an interesting position for this man who it is expected, it is expected of him to change an, an economic state of the state of Abia an economy that is stagnant, an economy that is in need of transfusion. My friends, I would like you to help me welcome the Senior Special Advisor to His Excellency Governor T.A.R.G. Honorable Agu Ojuku Welcome to Nigerian TV Online, my friend. It's my pleasure. I'm, it's a I'm good happy. thing to have you here. This you are an extremely important guest of this television show. Thank you very much. Welcome again. I'm glad to be here. Anna. Yeah. My brother. Yes. Abia State and its economy, its industry, its roads, its employment or unemployment its health system, the whole health of Abia State's economy is stagnant. They have called upon you to be the one that gives a strategic plan to change it. Please tell our audience a little bit of CV of yourself. Because I've seen your CV, it's quite long, and I've been telling everybody the same thing. But uh, if you could please tell our audience uh, a little background that brings you to this position of being the one man that is urged and asked to change, to come up with a big, better plan. Could you tell them? Okay. Uh, like you said, my name is Agu Ojuku. I'm the Chief Economic Advisor to the Governor of Abbey State. Chief T.A. Ochi. Before I came on board, I was a strategic management consultant. My responsibility was to develop enterprises. And you cannot run an economy without enterprises. Uh, an economy is actually a system of interrelated parts that must work together to produce common results. And enterprises play a very big role. And in fact, you cannot have enterprises run well if you don't have people who are properly empowered. And the enterprise cannot also run if you don't have a good policy environment. So all these things come together in the economy, and that's what I've been doing outside before coming in on the inside now. General, you are the one that is being brought to the state of Abia uh, to revolutionize the state of the econ economy of this state. Of this state. Mm -hmm. One, Honorable Ojuku. Yes. What is your plan? How do you plan on revolutionizing the economy of a state such as Abia? You see, the problem of Abia is not, it's not peculiar to Abia state alone. It, it's, it's a problem with the whole of Africa. They, they've always misunderstood strategy, what it means. 
So they make the wrong choices. And when they make the wrong choices, of course, you get the wrong results. Um, we said our quality is not in the outcome, it's in the process. Mm -hmm. If your process is wrong, your output will definitely be wrong. Be wrong. There's mm -hmm. no, no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. And Africans for a long time <coughs> have misunderstood understood the meaning of uh, the West strategy. West strategy means so many things, but an economic development strategy for any country or any economy mm -hmm. means your choice, the choice you have made of the elements of your economy. Mm -hmm. The fact, and before you make this choice, you must know what drives economic development. Uh -huh. If you do not know that, mm -hmm. you make the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and strategy is not about fine-tuning processes that already exist. Mm -hmm. Strategy starts with your understanding of the future of the global economy. Mm -hmm. What is the world going to? What is the level of competitiveness you need mm -hmm. in the global economy to operate well? What do you do in your local economy to be competitive in the international market? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you can find that, then you can um, do your analysis, find the factors, the critical factors of success that you need to, um, the things you need to do very well in, right. to, to succeed and make it into an international market. What so, drives Abian's Abian state economic development plan? What, what, what's the driving mechanism? Knowledge. Is that what is driving that it? Is what, you see, or what is needed? We, we, right now, what is driving it is knowledge. Because you need outstanding people with the right knowledge to make a good strategy before you can think of implementing the strategy. So the so, have the, that kind of intellectual... Yes, they do. Unfortunately, um, in the past, um, the system recognized those who have who are cash over those who have knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, the traders were in charge in many places. Even if you go to the communities, if somebody is very rich, um, is allowed to make comments in the meeting before um, the people with knowledge are allowed to say anything. Mm -hmm. So this time around, what we have the done... The is winning? Yes. Uh -huh. Because we have a governor who is providing intellectual leadership. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what intellectual leadership means. It means leadership with focus. This man is not building structures around himself. He's building structures around the functions that need to be performed and the results that need to be achieved. Mm -hmm. And if you look at me, I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. But this governor simply felt that he would like an economic plan mm -hmm. that is beyond political and economic reproach. Mm -hmm. A plan that will bring everybody from all political parties, mm -hmm. from all parts of the world, mm -hmm. together to see Abia as the best production destination, mm -hmm. so that activities here, economic activities here can pick up. Mm -hmm. So he came from the political um, arena into uh, the, the intellectual arena and picked me mm -hmm. to come to the job. Mm -hmm. And because of the clearance he has given to me, the fact that he has told me that he wants the best ideas, we spent some time searching inside the Abia economy for those with the right knowledge, mm -hmm. the right learning. Mm -hmm. Not just people who are informed, but people who know. Mm -hmm. Now, he also gave us <clears throat> authority to go beyond the shores of Abia and find anybody, anywhere, who has the knowledge that we think we might need here mm -hmm. and tap the knowledge, even if you have to pay for it. Now, you know, this is the part where I like to come in. Yeah. You know that there are Abians in diaspora oh, yes. who have the talents and the experience and the capability yeah. to do exactly what you are saying yes. they need to do. Have you put into a strategic plan on how to get to those IBMs across the world? Oh yes. Um, already we've been networking with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, you can't achieve much if you don't network. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, networking does not mean that you have considered what you should do to somebody else. No. It simply means that you are open to learn. You are open to cooperation because no country can go far if they don't cooperate. Mm -hmm. Look at what happens in the Western world. Discoveries are made, people share ideas, they shackle each other, then they go back to their, their zones mm -hmm. you know, and, and use the improvement of cost. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. If anybody anywhere has the idea we think we need or the learning we think it will, uh, will help us, mm -hmm. we let work with the person. Find out what needs to be done. And they should be able to contact you. Oh, yes. And oh. call you and say, look, hey, we, oh, got, a my, we got an idea that Oh, my office is in the public domain. Uh -huh. And that's why I tell everybody, 
My phone number is not a secret. Mm -hmm. People should have it. Mm -hmm. uh, policies are a very big concern in economics. People like to know what's going on, mm -hmm. how their concerns are being taken care of, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I like people to call me and tell me what they think mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I also try to reach out and let people know what we're doing. Uh, uh, let me ask you before we really go into. What are some of the specific factors that are needed uh, in order to move this economy forward? And you're familiar with the governor's vision and mission yes. for Abia State. Yes. It does it correlate with the strategy that you have in plan or that you're putting in plan? Yeah, you see, you can set out with an agenda, mm -hmm. and when you mobilize people to come in, you expect them to have sharpened their agenda. So if there was any agenda on board before, yeah. what we have done or what we are doing is to shackle that agenda mm -hmm. so it becomes cutting edge mm -hmm. and can get the best results possible, mm -hmm. you know, in the circumstance we, uh, we have. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the governor had an agenda before he came on board. But remember, he has brought us in for a professional touch and that is what we are now providing. Yes. Shackling his agenda, we have seen <coughs> from what he's been saying, that what he actually wants to run is a market economy. Mm -hmm. That means an economy where that an economy that is solution driven, driven. Mm -hmm. not bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Not politics, mm -hmm. per se, but, but an economy <clears throat> that makes it possible for people to succeed in the endeavors, what one endeavors they have chosen to be in. Mm -hmm. So we have now crystallized his vision into what he really means and so on for better understanding by everybody out there in the society. Uh, uh, can you define the role of the private sector and its value uh, towards the development of our state economy? Oh, beautiful. You see, <coughs> government has no business in business. My governor has said that several times. And that simply means that the businesses should go back to the private sector because they are better equipped to drive businesses. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that you need entrepreneurial spirit to run a business very, very well. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a passion for what you do, you can put in extra hours. Mm -hmm. But if you run a business as a government uh, uh, activity, the man appointed them might just be appointed on political grounds without any background knowledge mm. or without any commitment to the program. Mm -hmm. So he just goes there, occupies the office and does nothing mm -hmm. and fails to inspire anybody. Mm -hmm. So by considering we are leaving the businesses um, to the private sector to operate, we are simply saying that that drive with which they start businesses with nothing mm -hmm. and go to the highest point, mm -hmm. that is what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. but Government is now going to uh, develop policies that will <clears throat> make the environment, that will enable the environment. We would keep talking about enabling the environment. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to clarify a few issues here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that enabling the environment means roads, uh, power supply, so on. No, that is not enabling the environment. That is social overhead infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's just like the background of the economy. But the enabling environment comes through policies. Policies that are made to inspire you to take the plunge. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To take that plunge. To take that plunge. Uh -huh. i give you an example. The man, uh, uh, I've been have roads. But he can come up with a policy that says that any company that builds its factory and tells the road leading to the factory, say for five kilometers or six kilometers, mm -hmm. government will allow you over five years this and that. Um, some benefits, some retention of the taxes, and so uh, on, yeah. uh -huh. so that you can push on the effect, recover your money, and so on. Mm -hmm. That is a enabling environment. Yeah, it's done everywhere else in the world. Oh, yes. Where that can make the the industries are allowed to put their headquarters in a particular city, yes. and you're given a tax break. Simple. That's you know, my, my, my brother, you know, you're sort of like a brother to me, so if I say my brother, I mean, that's not an offensive thing. No, it's not. Now. Okay. <laughs> you know, you watch the growth of Abia State's economy. And you watch its effort to reconstruct, to let the federal government know that it's 
doing something to improve the economy of the state. You watch the efforts of some of its commissioners and the governor himself. You watch as these people do what they can to try to improve their, their economic status. As a chief economic advisor to the governor, what are some of the ways Abia State must change in order to meet the challenges of tomorrow's economy? What are some of the ways that they must change? They must have some things that are just not working. Talk to us about some of these changes. Oh, oh yes. You see, like we, we talked about strategy, for instance. We must choose strategy, which is why this governor instructed within the first few weeks of my appointment that we create a brand new strategy for the state economy. Like I said before, <clears throat> the past, you, you've heard about policy somersaults in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. um, like I said, policy is in process, not in the outcome. If you make your policy with the wrong knowledge, with the wrong information, it's bound to crash. There are no two ways about it. No two ways. So any policy you look at, you will see that the policies we have made to work in the past or to react to an event are not really to look forward. Mm -hmm. So you make a policy and in no time it's overrun it's by overrun. events and it's, it's useless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So this governor realized, like I said, we need to change strategy and he realized that. So he commissioned uh, my office to ensure that we have a brand new strategy. Now this strategy is ready for public presentation and it's going to be done by the governor himself. I want to tell you one thing about this strategy. It was not done by defenders. What you have in the past is anytime people sit together to make a strategy for, for the state, they look at what's happening around and then they provide for each one to remain on course. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, if you visualize the future and visualize um, how things should happen, should occur, you will see that some processes shouldn't be there. I'll give you an example. I understand. Go ahead. We, we have the, the motorcycle system that I use it to, to um, uh, do the mass transit program. Right. But motorcycles are not in contention in mass transit. You don't consider them at all. But the people who made the old strategies, they look at what is happening and then they say, oh, okay, motorcycle is there, give them uniforms, give them helpers, organize them into a, 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 a union and let them operate. Let them operate. Oh, that's wrong. And, uh, that's wrong. And don't forget, that's a very high risk that, that's, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, you put the people at risk. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a whole family running on that bike. And any little thing that goes wrong, they all perish. In, in transportation, mass is a minimum of 30. Any system that can carry out the type of problem is not mass. Mm -hmm. So we just leave that aside. Mm -hmm. So, um, because we need to use knowledge in everything we do. Mm -hmm. So, and remember, if you have the right knowledge, your strategy will be right. Mm -hmm. So, by asking us to come up with a brand new strategy, the governor has already taken the step to correct things. The only thing that will assure success of this administration is the strategy. The strategy must be right before the implementation can work. Mm -hmm. Now, after you've done this strategy, of course, you must implement the strategy. And that is when, at which point, you must reform the civil service. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Because the civil service is a machinery for delivering government service. And the civil service should match the strategy you have, not the other way around. Match the strategy oh, yes. of the governor's vision. vision. Because if, if, you see, you have a vision, you have a strategy to realize the vision, mm -hmm. then you have the civil service to deliver the strategy. So you must have a civil service that matches the kind of strategy that you have and implement it. For instance, now that we want to run a market uh, economy, our civil service must be entrepreneurial civil service. People must be made to think beyond, to strive beyond their regular... The operations. regular working day oh, seems to be... Yes, they, they, the little day. things that they do. They must put their concentration on output, not on input. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, even at the federal government level, when they want to measure successes, they say, oh, in the last budget, the last budget, um, 50 billion was voted for agriculture, oh, that means government has done well in agriculture, but it's not so. You can invest 50 million billion in agriculture and you don't have any additional cup of garlic to show for it. Yes, yes. So it's, it's a failed strategy. Mm. It's a failed um, action. Mm -hmm. But you can put in only uh, 500 million in agriculture and you have several additional cups of garlic on the other side. Mm -hmm. So um, input and output, it's not a matter of how much you are putting, but it's a matter of how much you, you get out. Get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's why. I told you the government is providing intellectual leadership. It's more concerned with the resource of his action than by the actions themselves. Let's say that we are at half point of the game. We are just at half point. Yes. The, this, uh, new, this administration is relatively new, mm -hmm. less than a year old. Yes. From what you have seen so far, and in all sincerity and as accurate as possible, is Abia State ready to present its economic plan for the future? And if it is, how drastic, how dramatic is it going to cause? How much of a ripple, a ripple effect? Is <laughs> I'll tell you. You are just like um, Larry King. Mm -hmm. You you make people say what what needs to be said. You know. Um, I thank you for good questions. You see, the plan is going to be dramatic because if things have been going wrong for a long, long time, only dramatic change will be necessary. This, some people came here the other day. They wanted to introduce dry cycle into our economy. They said it's a means of transiting from the motorcycle to the dry cycle. But you see, they were thinking emotionally and thinking with the wrong um, um, uh, understanding. Like I said, tricycle will also carry only about five people. Mm. And it cannot move, maintain a certain pace on the highway. Mm -hmm. When you're on the, on, on the road, that's why we say, without a scientific basis, common sense can mislead you. Your common sense can tell you that, oh, a tricycle will convey people. But when a tricycle gets on the road, because it doesn't have the power to maintain pace, it ends up causing go slow, holding every other traffic behind. I mean, in vehicle movement, any time vehicles slow down for any reason, other vehicles arrive, and then they become, you now have a congestion. And the risk factors, yes. yes. And when you have a congestion, people start struggling to overtake the order and so on, and then you have more problems. We always say bombs breed more bombs. If you do something wrong, that wrong thing will cause other things to be wrong. So we are going straight from the Okada into city buses. Just like having London transport. This city can probably use it. Oh, yes. So that's the kind of dramatic change we'll see. Mm -hmm. And you see, for a long, long time, the entire national economy did not understand the importance of mass transit in the economy. Their concern was to move people from one state to the other, one city to the other, no, without any consideration. Not any for, Yes. People live and walk within. The locality. If you can't get to work, you can be at work. If you can't not be at work, you can be productive. You have an opportunity to be productive. If you are not productive, you can't earn any income. Mm -hmm. So we want to make it possible for people to get to work in good time, go home whenever they finish comfortably, without risking their lives every day on Okada. Because every day you make it alive back home on Okada, you should go for Thanksgiving. I wonder if Albanians in uh, Nigeria and the diaspora uh, understand the risk factor that uh, some of their parents and relatives are taking when they have to ride or cut. And do you know that uh, your, some of your relatives are putting their lives in danger daily? <clears throat> yeah. This is why the Bus transportation system is probably one of the best. Oh yes. Public <coughs> transportation system. And, and I, and I tell you something more. You see, your economy has to remain open for it to function. Mm -hmm. Right now, and people do not know 
that the best strategy to keep the economy open is mass transit. In other states, in our new strategy, our mechanism for keeping our economy open 24 hours is by the use of city mass transit system. We're going to have buses that will run from 5 a.m. in the morning <coughs> to 12 p.m. Uh, uh, midnight. To 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. And that means, uh, you know, right now, this, with this Okada we have, uh, there's a policy from government, they're not allowed to operate beyond 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I think. So once it's 7 o'clock, the only means of transport in the whole economy shuts down. Mm -hmm. And then the people have to trade. And because they have to trade, they can't go long distances to do business. They can't go long distances. They, in fact, without transportation, you have no integration. Right. If I can't come to your business, we can connect. Mm -hmm. You know, some things we can do on phone, others we must meet to do. So we can't go around night shifts if people can come to work. Oh yes, if you have a, a, a factory that should run three shifts, the night shifts are by 10 o'clock in the night. If you don't have a means of coming to work, you can be at work. And that means the company cannot run the night shift. They have to sack the staff people that are used for night shift. Is that not and and if, 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 if it's made possible for them, uh, for the staff to come to work, the company might now be um, desirous to run a night shift system, meaning that automatically employment will happen. Hmm. Oh yes, and you increase the capacity hmm. of the of the factory to produce goods. Because rather than produce uh, in two shifts, it's doing three. They can't even run three shifts. Oh yes, they can't even run two shifts right now because the second the second shift ends by ten o'clock at night. Then the third shift starts by ten o'clock. So because they can't find vehicles to go home by ten, so no second shift is run. We run only one shift. And in the public well, sector, well, especially in the bus system, yes. uh, working that midnight. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. We provide the mechanics that will fix the buses and oil the oh, buses yes. and wash the buses. You see, ready for the five o'clock shift. You see, because is that a dramatic? I mean, how much more dramatic can you make it in this in an economy that is sitting still? I'll tell you one thing. In this company, we believe in doing tackling the twenty percent effort that will give us the eighty percent result. You see, in everything you do, it's called part of Pareto uh, principle. In everything you do, twenty percent of the effort gives you eighty percent of the results. The other twenty percent, uh, the other eighty percent of the action only gives you twenty percent results. And if we can concentrate on that 20 percent, you see a quantum leap in no time. Just look at the benefits of having a city transport service. Right now, the companies close their test shift by, by 4 o'clock, and that's it for the day. No second shift, no third shift. But with a city transport service, the people for the second shift can go to work and be sure to find a vehicle to go home. While the people for the third shift will come to work, by the time the buses stop running by 12 o'clock, as we are as we are putting it tentatively now, by the time it stops running by 12 o'clock, the people for the third shift have, have already gone into work. And the people who, who went out for night entertainment and, and so on are already heading home. So by the time the, the night shift people in the factories are at work, the rest of the Aspects of the economy that need to shut down. It's a win win, win, -win, -win, -win situation. And if you get the few factories you have in the United States to double or triple their present capacity, that means it's three times the number of workers they have now in the first week. You know, Honorable Chuku, I think that uh, we have been able to pick up some great information on the future strategies and. Uh, and on the economic development of the state. Uh, what I'd like to do is to touch on some specific areas and let, let, let uh, all of us hear what you have to say. You, you just stay there with us for just a few more minutes uh, as we give uh, Honorable Juku uh, a moment of relaxation. We'll be right back, Just stay tuned. We'll be right back.